God is good, amen. And we are, um, what we're trying to do, amen, in the ministry, and many of you guys already know, is that no matter what season you may be in, amen, even uh, most churches, and I will say all churches, run into a problem with manpower, amen, and we're praying and asking God that God will just fix in people's hearts. And, and again, I know you may have um, prior obligations and stuff, and that's those things that cannot, but being and linking up, amen, and like Bishop have, has always said, and I've seen it, amen, I, when you allow yourself to stretch, amen, in certain areas, you will see that God will fill in the gaps, amen, and sometimes I, I used to say, hey, you know, I can't do four hours, but sometimes you can do two hours, sometimes you can do one hour and say, hey, I'm here, what do you need me, I gotta, and it's just doing that, and when we are doing that, amen, the needs within the house are taken care of. We know that because scripture tells us that. It, it is lives. When we look at the New Testament saints, they were lives that were changed. They were changed and they said, how, how do I serve? What, what, what do I do, amen? And when you see a body that is functional like that, where people are connecting and saying, hey, I can hold up this side. I was sharing with my wife the other day that we, even as pastors, are not, our responsibility is not to hold up the whole roof. Right? We don't get in the middle and try to balance the whole roof. It's we may get one part and then somebody else gets another part, and that's you know, and, and that's how it works. And Jesus, how do we do that? How do we become the hands and feet of Jesus? We just through obedience, just submitting, amen, and saying, Hey Lord, I, where can you where can you use my skills and talents and abilities? And I and I tell folks this that you may say, Well, I don't have any technical skills, amen, but you can help. You can serve. You can grab something. You can move something. Amen. You can come and be an encouragement. Amen. So like he was saying, um, he's going to be up here Saturday for me as well. Amen. I just made it through my work week. I got tomorrow. Amen. And I just thank God for that time. Um, we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord for our um, Rose Foundation fundraiser concert. Amen. That is something that we are excited. Please make plans. Please invite. Amen. We still move forward, amen, that we've never um, put imposition on people where we, I've been part of ministries that have, amen, they, they're like, you know, you're like, it's, it's to the point almost legalism, amen, but I think that it should be from the heart, amen, because why? We know that God says, I don't I don't want a, a uncheerful uh, giver. I don't want someone that's grumbling in their heart. We want people that says, Lord, here I am. You, you get so much for me. And you see your purpose within the local house. And that's what we're doing. We're coming together. And it's also, we're going to be representing our community for whosoever will gets the opportunity to be a host, amen, of, of folks that are going to be coming in. And so if you can, join us. Um, like, that's like Deacon Adams just said, I'm going to be here a little bit early. I'll be helping him. We'll be cleaning up some things, just, just serving. And during that, and I'm going to tell you something. It's humbling. It's humbling. If you want to be blessed by God, humble yourself, humble yourself and say, Oh Lord, this is stretching me, but let me, and then you watch this. You will always see God always will turn in and you'll say, I feel good. I'm glad I came. That's always been my time, especially in those moments where I'm like, Lord, you know, I only had a couple hours of sleep. I remember uh, coming in from on call a couple of times and, and having to minister um, and, and saying like, wow, I only had four hours of sleep. But guess what? I said, Lord, here I am. I am an open vessel for you. Amen. And so I don't want to make it about me. I'm just, I, I hope that by being a, uh, a living example, just to show you, like, how do we do it? Amen. How does Bishop do it? I see what he's going through. I saw him on Sunday and his wife and, and the family dynamics and things have changed. Amen. But he's preaching. He preached with, with fire. He preached with urgency, amen, understanding that the days are short, amen. So keep that in mind. Be, uh, when you do that, when you give that, you will see that your spiritual maturity will go as well. Where you are serving. We see that in Scripture, the Bible always lays down the foundation of a true spiritual person. Oftentimes, we got people going, I'm spiritual, I'm spiritual, I'm spiritual. It is seen in your humility. It is, number one, seen in whether or not you can wash some feet, whether or not you can serve, amen. Jesus, it was no wonder why he said that to Peter and said, if I don't wash your feet, then you can't partake in the kingdom. And Peter would, you know, flip the switch and say, okay, wash my hair, wash my feet, you know, um, because he was teaching something. Jesus, every time we hear something that from our Lord and Savior, it's about teaching. 
It's about maturing us, amen? And I hope that tonight as we go through the word of God that you will receive, amen, some of this word, amen? We, we understand that faith come by hearing and hearing from God's word. The theme over the past couple of weeks, amen, has been the authority of scripture. Now, the tie-in to that, amen, the reason why the authority of scripture is so important is because the way you view scripture is how you view God, amen? There's a correlation. We, we've seen it. We understand that religious uh, um, institutions throughout all time have always shown an exterior part, religious garbs, religious speak, even Christian needs, amen, but not surrender to God, not surrender to the will of God, and not and not shown in demonstration by behaving Christ-like, amen. The movement went around about uh, what would Jesus do, and I remember the bumper stickers, I remember the t-shirts, I remember, and it, even that turned into where it was just another, it's like wearing a cross, amen. It had held no true significance, but as we look in scriptures, we understand that he is the pattern, not necessarily even your pastor, amen. Your pastor's pattern is Christ, follow me as I follow Christ, right? And that's, that's the pattern. The pattern is Christ, Christ's behavior, and, and we, we we see even in other religious systems like Catholicism, where you had the clergy, they're the ones that brought it in, and, and we saw a removal of that through the uh, Protestant movement, the Reformation, the Catholic Church was like, no, we're the clergy, you're the, you're the laity, you sit there, I'll tell you what scripture says. And you can see that, hey, if you got a, an anointed godly person, they're, they're going to do the right thing. But what happens if you get somebody who wants to pull on the strings and who wants to uh, 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 mingle the, the scriptures, amen, who wants to manipulate scripture to control you, amen? This is why I've heard even from some atheist uh, uh, associates that I know that, oh, yeah, religion, we've, we've heard this, religion, just, all it is is control people, which, you know, there's obviously there's an argument to the opposite of that. It's power corrupts. It's money that corrupts. Amen. It is uh, position. There's so many other things. But to, to, for the sake of their argument, they're saying that in the past you've had men uh, of God that got up and told people to do this. And that's why they did it. Amen. And we see that the pattern of the church was seen in the New Testament. This is one of the reasons why, by the grace of God, I went on that journey because I said, Lord, Lord, what is the pattern of your church? How should we function? How should we then live? Amen. It is the question. And we the way we do it, we do it by obeying scripture. There's no uh, uh, a secret sauce, no secret formula. It is in obedience, amen. That is the degree of where you even see um, uh, so-called mature people in the faith, those that are obedient to Christ, obedient to the word, amen. People go, well, how do you do it? I'm trying to get delivered over something. And I tell you this, it's obedience. And how do you view scripture? Do I see it as the revealed word of God? Do I see it as the authority? Is it the authority? Or is it just, hey, brother, you know, some of that, you know, you got to watch out for. I've literally had people say that. That's why I always bring that up. I, people that were pastors. Well, brother, you know, and I was like, I, look, I don't know that much scripture, but what you just said was false. It's either real or it's not. You throw the whole thing out. You don't go through it. You know, you have, I believe that the same God that created the universe Amen. We would say that that's probably the biggest miracle is the same God that can preserve scripture, that could bring scripture throughout 6,000 years, 66 books, Old Testament, New Testament. That same God can control even the devil's plans of perverting the word. And we saw Jesus demonstrated flawlessly when he interacted with Satan and Satan said, I'm going to give you a little word out of context. I'm going to see how, how you handle that out of context. Said the right thing. He said, hey, everything he said was correct, but it was out of context. What did he do in the Garden of Eden? Uh, the, uh, Garden of Eden? Same thing, out of context. Did God say that? See, God trying, you see, he know you try. It is that whole, um, God, you ain't the boss of me. That's been since the dawn of creation, amen? And we see those patterns, and those patterns are supposed to instruct us. Those patterns are supposed to make us go, okay, I, I see. You learn from the past. Those demonstrations in, in, in the Bible, this is why I say as we, um, I want you to go ahead, if you can, pull me up, Ephesians chapter 5. Amen. As I'm moving into this introduction, amen, and just talking about the fact that the pattern has already been set. Amen. Throughout all scripture, God says, this is what I want you to do. This is how I want you to behave. Amen. And when you see a deviation from that, 
you see the confusion, you see the chaos, you see people kind of doing their own thing. And God has always said it's black and white in scripture. Amen. There's no gray area. And we live in a postmodern world. And we talked about that opening up. The, one of the things I was doing was telling you about the different philosophies, postmodernism, relativism, all those different words and terms. Amen. Not just to, to give you education and data, but it was meant to give you a, a firm understanding that the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal. It, it's, it's to demonstrate that it, it's persuasive and very cunning and very crafty speech that if you don't have the word, you won't be able to discern it. You'll be like, okay, you said it. He said he must be Jesus. He said he's Jesus. Or do we look at the fruit? I had a gentleman that actually did that. I, was, I, I went to a call and he was like, I am Jesus. And people were going, ooh, he cried. And, and, you know, and, and, you know, obviously the guy had some, some issues, but people were like going, okay, look at him. And he was acting pious, and he was going, to, and I said, God is not, about, and I whispered to him, I said, God is not about confusion. God is of sound mind and clarity. And some of the stuff that he was saying, he stopped saying, amen. But it was one of those things that I've seen many Christians, I had somebody say that, how do we discern what is true from false? It is a reliance on scripture. It is the authority of scripture. It is the foundation of scripture. Amen. And that's what I have been blessed with throughout the years of being a part of this ministry. A realization that it's either real. It's either the word of God or it's not. Amen. We uh, read last week uh, 1 John, right? We opened it up and said in the beginning was the word, right? We go through that. And I've seen people really take that scripture and, and boy, I'm telling you, you start shouting. You start going, yes. And I'm like, reflect on what you just heard. If he's the word, amen, and in the beginning, amen, that same God is in control of everything, amen, and God does have a standard for his church. And once we understand that church, that, that, that standard, we can move in flow and harmony, amen. It, not, it, it no longer turns into the philosophies of this world. The philosophy, like I said, of uh, relativism. Turn on the news and you will see what I mean by relativism. Your truth is your truth. My truth is my truth. There's really no real truth, right? Even though that person is saying, oh, there's no objective truth. There is no authoritarian truth. There's no, um, there's no um, authoritarian truth out there. And we can be our own God, amen? It is the same trick that he did with Eve in the garden, amen? Basically, what he told her, you can be God. He's trying to keep you from, you know, and I always say this. This is being played out over and over. And as we get older, amen, Jesus said, there's no wonder why he says, come as a child, your heart, your attitude, because you can tell them something. They will lie. They go, yes, yes, yes. Amen. But, yes, the microphone, it is on, I think. We're trying to go live on, okay. All right, that may be a battery issue, but that's okay. We're going to continue preaching. Amen. Um, Sister Mindy, you still got us? Amen. She's our backup. Amen. So, the word of God is that authority. And so we, we've been staying on that because I understand that my spiritual formation came in to the fact that when I saw the word of God as the word of God, and, 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 and honestly, I argued with it in my mind. I was like, wait, wait, hold on, because I understood the implications. When we understand the implication of what is being taught, we will understand that, oh, so you, that's your design for marriage. Oh, that's your design for the church. Oh, that's your design for, for authority. We understand that the Christian worldview is for the Christian. It's not an option. It's not option A, B, or C. We see it because we are now in a new kingdom. We understand that we are born again. Born again means that we are new creations, new creatures. Amen. And that reality, oftentimes, of course, every, you know, the happy talk, heaven, right? I get to go to heaven. That's why people will receive that and not receive the implications of that. The lordship. We sung about it tonight. The lordship, the kingship of Jesus. Do we bow our knees or are we puffed up and, and I can't be taught. I'm grown. That is the spirit of this day. That is the spirit of the day. I heard ministers growing up and I heard people going, well, you know, some of that is good and some. And I was like, I was confused. I was like, well, well some of it's wrong and all of it's wrong. This is the position you understand from atheists, from the atheists. They like, no, you're trying to run our life according to that book. I understand why they're fighting us. Because they understand the implications. And oftentimes in the church, we split. 
we have this relativistic philosophy and it has crept into the church. It's where you believe that and I believe that. No, 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 no. The scriptures are clear. And I'm not talking about things that are mysteries. I'm not talking about revelation that we don't know. No, I'm talking about things that we do know. It lays down the authority. And it for the, the biggest thing is for the Christian, we are to conform to it. We are to, sit, to look straight ahead and say, Lord, by your grace, by your spirit, how do we do it? We do it by his Holy Spirit because you can't do it in your own ability. You can say, I've got a purpose in my heart. I'm going to be good tonight. No, no, no. It's obedience to the scripture. What does scripture tell you? Are you are you having your garden, your garden of Gethsemane moment every night? I don't know about you, but I am. That's the battle. That's that's spiritual. That that's anointed. When you death, where are we dying to? We're dying to the flesh. Now he was dying, knowing where he was going, right? Our Lord and Savior, and we watch that, and everybody cry on the passions of Christ, and they go, "Oh, that's sentimental." It's not about sentimental. It's looking and going, look, look at that. Look at that example. He understood what was about to happen. The implication, nevertheless, Father, not my will be done, but your will be done. Are we doing that? Are we doing that to our flesh when we're interacting with people, when we're interacting within the church, when we're flowing, when we're being obedient to the mandate of Christ and throughout every aspect of our life? That separates, that separates the truth from the false. I was hearing a, a word I was sharing with my brother. I said, you know, I said, you know, both of us, we've been saying it. We, go, we, we study the word, and then we also hear some, some teaching to, kind of, to get us into that mindset. I always, I'm at work, and you can imagine, many of you guys know what my line of work is, and so I'm thinking murder, death, kill, right? How do, how do I spread my brain from all of that, right? Because all it is, it's, it's a reminder of the fallenness of this planet. So I'm not shocked. The, the, in the beginning, I understand why the world, I have a strong understanding of how we got into this mess. So I'm not shocked. I'm saddened. When someone dies that I love, I'm saddened. I don't, you don't want people to die. I don't want to die. Amen. But I can surrender to his will. I can say, nevertheless, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. I see that being worked out in Bishop. He comes and many of us are like, how you doing? You know, doing that, and we want to be, you know, he's going through it. And your job, what is our responsibility? What is our role? Our role is to encourage. We are the encouragers. We are the stay strong. Hey, I'm coming to church. I'm still praising the Lord. You want to encourage a pastor? Let him know that you, what are you receiving from the word? One of the biggest things that I can imagine what's on his heart is, Will the flock, what happens to the flock, amen? He has his wife, he has his family, and then he's saying, what about the flock? Are we, will, will we obey scripture and say we will be in the house of the Lord when we can make it, amen? I always say that, I always preface that because there are times, amen, you might be injured, might be sick, might be, might be a lot of things, right? So we're not legalistic, but we do know that faith come by hearing and hearing of the word of God. And so we live in a, in a world where there's a lot of faithless people. We, there's a lot of faithless people because they're not hearing the word in the manner, amen? Because remember, when, when um, <clears throat> we are biased to ourselves, what does that mean? That means I will break myself, and eh, I didn't fail. I mean, I, if, you, if you ask me, how, how do I fail? <laughs> right? And that's why you need a pastor. That's why you need someone to kind of evaluate. That's why you need a coach, Amen. Right? You, you get coaches because they go, hey, mm, these are some areas, right? And then you hear it through the word. As the word comes forth, when Bishop is preaching, I'm going, that's for me. I know this. I've seen too many men of God fail. And I go, how? And I don't say that from a position of, oh, 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 that's not me. I'm like, that might happen to me. How do you resist that? By obedience, amen. So we're going to go read Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm going to give you the, the, the template for what he says for believers, amen. Um, it, it's not legalism. It's not, uh, oh, you just trying to control. No, no, no. It is the word of God. It is when I was reading and studying this, each and everything was a canister that was destroying my flesh and reminding me. Reminding me about my righteousness. Reminding me about what my Lord did. This is why, and I always say this, this is why true worship, where, where you are focused on the Lord and you're going, God, because when we worship God, it should make us bow down and fall to, our, for, fall to the ground. And sadly to say, sometimes we don't do that. And I'm not saying, it, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying every person is going to be prostate, but my point is, is the attitude of the heart. 
It is the heart that says, wow, what did I just hear? What did I just hear about my God? My God is greater. My God is powerful. My God, um, we were singing that song, our God is greater. Our God, and we were singing it, and it was a, I wanted you to hear that as it was a mantra. It was a marching order. It was like soldiers marching out to battle. And then we heard, what did we hear? We heard, um, uh, let love explode and bring the, we hear that said, our God is roaring like a lion. What did that tell us? That told us that don't mess with Jesus. When he comes back, that song that song is all about him. It's his lordship. It is the fact that he will judge the world in righteousness. Amen. This is, these are things that I always say that you, you'll hear me say happy talk. A lot of times in many ministries, there's a lot of happy talk. Amen. But no one is saying, hey, get your life right because God is coming back soon. Or don't die in the penalty of your sin. There's an urgency, amen, that each and every one of us should be preaching. This is why you need the word. You need the word. It instructs you. It encourages you. It gives you that boldness. There's times in my life when I was cowardice. Amen. And then I read scripture and I see what people have gone through. Amen. So we go and we say Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore, and he comes out the gate swinging. Therefore, be imitators of God. What? See, God, you don't got it because grace. Yes, grace. But listen to this. As beloved children and walk in love. Why is the theme of love so important? Because it insulates. Everything you do in ministry is surrounded by your motive. Love exposes your motive. And walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us. Amen. And offer an offering and a sacrifice to God as a sweet savor. Amen. When you worship God, when you're moving and you're we're praising together, and I tell you, it's not an individual, it's not an individual sport. Amen. You think about heaven, think about the revelation of what we're gonna see in heaven. You're not gonna see the ones blowing on their nails and and, 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 and checking everything out other than the word of God, other than the preaching, other than you're not you're, we are going to be one mind, one accord going, Jesus. We're going to be praise you, Lord. Every time I read that, I go, man, we got a lot to, we got a lot, a lot of ground to cover, amen, until we get to that point, amen, as a church. And I used to say, you got the praises and then you got the ones that don't praise. No, everybody is supposed to be doing it, amen, until we come into and conform to the image of God. And it says, as a sweet smelling savor, so your praise, your collective praise, your, your united praise is a sweet smelling savor. God knows what you're going through, so that sacrifice, that sacrifice of praise means that you're going through something, and you should be out, you should be pouting, you should be at home, you should be like, I'm upset, uh, you should be doing all that, but you said, no, nevertheless, not my will be done, let your will be done. Then it comes with verse 3, it says, but sexual immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be mentioned amongst you as is proper amongst the saints. And there must be no filthiness or foolish talk or vulgar joking, which are not fitting, but giving, but, and here's another part of that. He says, so don't do that sinning stuff. This is what you should be doing. But rather, give thanks. When you came here tonight with your sacrifice of praise, when you said, Lord, you know I'm going through something, my mind is being attacked, my body is being attacked, you are giving God something that he knows. I always say, I'm always reminded, like, almost like God don't know. God, you don't know what I'm going through. And God's like, really? But the mere fact that you are here tonight on a Thursday, amen, you're, and you said, hey, tonight, tonight, this, this is, and, and we should be doing this more and more, but the mere fact that you, the, by the Holy Spirit, and I, I believe it's the Holy Spirit that draws us, amen, everything we do, everything, our, our motivation is reminding by the Holy Spirit, amen, amen. Um, but rather give thanks for this you know with certainty that no sexual, immoral, or impure, or greedy person <clears throat> amounts to an uh, uh, idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. See that no one deceives you with empty words. Amen. We live in a society where it's, it's, it's all around you. It's all around empty words, no power, amen, no authority. Because I'm going to tell you, and I, I will stand on this, it's not little itty-bitty old uh, Pastor Guzby. 
The authority comes from scripture. Each and every one of you had that same power. When you speak, thus says the, the Lord. When you speak the word of God, amen. P apart from that, not your ingenuity, not I'm going to mix a little bit of my philosophy with the word, not that. The word of God is that power and authority. Facing, even facing death, even facing accusations, even facing um, trials, tribulations, amen. It is the authority and the word of scripture, amen. And it says, um, and it says, in, uh, impure or greedy person, which amounts to an idolater, amen. That is a person who creates a God to suit themselves. A lot of that is still going on. Yes, I'm not talking about trinkets. I'm not talking about things you wear around your neck. But do you understand that there is a psychological idolatry where you go, my God, says me and him got something going on we he know when i can make it to church he know when i can praise him he knows all that I, i'm creating a god to suit myself idolatry it's a mental idolatry it is the word of god coming forth when we hear the word and we go wow okay lord so you this is what you want this is the will this is the will of god for for his people amen and he says, even in that, idolatry has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. See that no one deceives you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Amen. Therefore, do not become partakers with them. Why is he saying this? He's given, making a dichotomy. He says, he's, this is in the word, because guess what? It was going on. And the Holy Spirit the Apostle Paul, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, brought this forth for that church, amen, and also for us today. Therefore, do not become partakers with them, for you were once in darkness. This is good news. This is where it starts. It, it, it had a negative tone, now it's moving into a positive. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, amen. I believe every word that is used in the word of God is intentional, amen. Children, you can teach them something. They don't go, I heard that last week. They don't go, oh, I read that this morning. They listen to the word and go, Lord, is that for me? Is that for me? You say that tonight? For me? Amen? For the fruit of life consists of goodness, righteousness, and truth. As you try to learn what is pleasing, what is pleasing to the Lord, do not participate in the useless deeds of darkness. But instead, even expose them. We should be exposing. When we're silent, when we're like, well, I'm indifferent. I'm just going to keep this opinion to myself. Amen. I, look, I, I've been there. This time I'm around people, and I'm like, mm, if I say something, they're going to they gonna know. God is saying, even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. We shouldn't be talking about it. We shouldn't be uh, 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 bringing in the attitudes and the mindsets of the, of the world. Amen. But all things become visible when they are exposed by light. Amen. This is why it's so important with the word, the word of God. For everything that becomes visible is light. Amen. We were once in darkness. This is why the Bible says we were once in darkness. We were talking about darkness. It's, it's an absence of information. Amen. Not just the photon and non-photon uh, materialism. He's talking about darkness and light. Amen. The kingdom of God, when you got born again, you were, the Holy Spirit quickened your mortal body and the word of God became alive to you. You're like, whoa. Oh, yes. Amen. Before, it was, huh? I don't get it. Right? Illumination by the Holy Spirit. This is why we pray that prayer. That's why when I'm talking with somebody and I know that I know what the enemy's doing, their minds are darkened. How do I know? Because my mind was dark. My thinking was dark. Amen. And it says that, but all these things become visible when they are exposed by light, for everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason, it says, Awake sleepers and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Amen. And then it goes on to say. So then, be careful on how you walk. Now, this is, this is very powerful. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Make the most of your time because the days are evil. Amen? We live in, with this understanding, not just blase. I'm just going about my day. I'm just, hey, it's another Sunday. It's another Thursday. It's another. No, we, there's a sense of urgency. I've heard it for years when Bishop preaching, people go, he kind of intense. I'm like, he preaches with urgency. It, it, it is intense. I, I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, sugarcoat it. He preaches with, as if you may leave out here and die. 
He preaches it as your sons and your daughters and your grandchildren need to be delivered, amen, and their deliverance is come, going to come through you. That's it. Can you pray for uh, over here? I ain't going to do it, but can you pray? Now, he will come alongside you, but the whole object is for you to become a minister and lay hands on your children, your grandchildren. Amen. To, to, to speak to them. To stand strong with them. Amen. It is not, hey, um, where's the deliverer? I need a deliverer. Why do we come to church? We come to church for that instruction. To hear the word. To receive the word. And to be the word. Amen. The word being manifested in our life. Amen. It is with that. Amen. He, and he's, he's laying it down. This is each one of these. And each verse. Amen. I, I, I tend to pause because I tend to um, digest my food a little bit slower so I can taste it. Amen. So now we look, eat the word look, look, and we don't even know what it tastes like. We don't know the flavor. Amen. And the word of God is that delicate where, hey, hey, take a little nibble today. You know, like like you see people out, food tasters and all that, they go, ooh, the palate, it gets me. And the reason why is so that they can receive every bit of it. Amen. It is the word of God. Each and every word means something. We should explore that. Amen? Digest it and then apply it. So, <clears throat> so then be careful how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine in which this is debauchery, or there's another word called dispensation. Amen. But be filled, amen, in, uh, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another. And I love this. I love this. This is what we're going to do on Saturday, amen. A lot of times you've got different formats. you got different formats. you got, you know, praise and worship, which I think is exclusively God's. Amen. And then, how do we feed on the Word? We do it through um, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody with our hearts to the Lord. Amen. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to our God and Father. And subject yourselves to one another in the fear of the Lord. In that, saints, what you just heard, amen, and, and, and even in my, I would say, my inadequacy, amen, on delivering, amen, the word of God is so powerful, the word of God cuts to the very part of us. When you hear that scripture where it says that the word of God is like sharper than a sword, and how it divides, it tells the truth, amen, it weighs the heart. You could say, I'm, hey, pastor, hey, pastor, I'm doing this with all my heart. I'm reminded about our Lord when the rich young ruler said, Master, what must I do to be one of your disciples? Now, many of us would have been impressed. We would have been like, oh, this is so nice. He's giving me flattery. Flattery, right? Jesus is more concerned about his soul. He says, sell everything you got and then come follow me. Exposing him, he walks away because he had much riches. He didn't have pain. He wasn't rude. Wasn't God discerns the heart. And I will tell you this, that our motives, amen, even my motives, amen, there's been times and just a little peekaboo in, into the pastor's uh, mindset. I remember Bishop told me, he says, you know, you've got to be prepared, amen, because if one person shows up, can you preach with the same fire? If two people show up, can you preach or are you like uh, one, uh, 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 two, uh, okay, good, now it's good. That's not how God judges it. He judges it off of your passion. He judges it off of your, your, your fire that you had inside of you to deliver the word. Amen. I've made it a, a point in my life that I can preach to myself. I can hear the word and, and then speak it back. I would, matter of fact, I would tell many of you guys, if you're ministers um, that want to speak and, and just hear some word and, and, and start speaking it. Start speaking it. What, what is he saying? And I'm talking about it, it rightly dividing the word truth. I had to throw that in there because it's not what, what I think God was saying in this. No, no, no. The author has an intent. The author has an intent. We follow what the author is meaning by his own scripture. We let scripture discern scripture. We don't do what, what again, like I said before, when we started this, this series about the word of God, and I said, I've seen it creep in to the church. Postmodern thought. There's no absolutes. There's no definitive 
Well, we don't know. There's certain things in scripture. You, you have some things that are, I would say, essential versus non-essential. You have non-essential things that are things that you can believe and may be not right about. But there are some essential things you need to know. You need to know about the Trinity. You need to know about the, the, the uh, uh, Christ and what he did on the cross. You need to know about the sinful nature of man. You need to know that the word of God is inerrant. Amen. It does not lie. It doesn't fail. Amen. It's effective. We talked about that. It was one of the words we talked about. The sufficiency of scripture, which is a, a lost language now because people are like, well, the Bible, but let's go over here for this guy's worldly philosophy on human behavior. The flesh, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. People have organic problems in their mind. Um, there may be some imbalances with chemicals and all. I, I'm not saying we're not anti that. What I'm saying is they're going, you're feeling this way. Because of blah, 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 blah. They're speaking to the soul. And the Bible says that God is the author and the finisher of our life. He's the one that created us. Amen. God. I'm, and this is some of the things that really started making me get excited about the word. Because I was like, the word of God is accurate. It's accurate. It's testifiable. You can test it. It's claims. Don't you think, and I tell people this, the divine revelation of the word, don't you think that the atheists, they threw out years and years, the pagans, not just the atheists, the, the non-believers, whoever you want to call them, don't you think that they could find something that they can go, aha, the Bible said this, but this ain't real. The Bible's that verifiable. It's not a science book, but it speaks to it as God being the creator. Amen? It is powerful. Amen? And that's why we stand on it. That's why we can say the Bible can answer the questions to marriage. It can answer questions to your personal life. A lot of times it's unforgiveness and bitterness and, and that's producing what's going on in your life. And oftentimes we say, no, it's not. It's that person. Until I'm, I get a healthy dose of the word of God. And the word of God confronts me in my sin. And it says, walk in love. Amen. As we look at the first verse, it says, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love. Period. Well, I don't like that person. Then you're being obedient, disobedient to the word of God. And we talked about last week, amen, if, if, if we had that recording, we talked about, we broke down love. Love is not what you think. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is long-suffering. Long All those various traits that I have had the privilege to watch in my pastor through the years when he could be upset and things don't go right in the ministry and your, your, your flock is not the optimum, amen, and he goes, have you ever, and I always tell everybody, have you ever seen him get mad? He, oh, he, he, he wants a certain thing. He wants a certain way, you know, what happened to the praise and worship? What happened on this, right? And I, and I watch him, and I study, and I go, man, that went a commitment. Sometimes it bothers me. I'm like, we need to perfect praise. Amen? But then I'm reminded about love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Am I kind? When I find myself, you will see me, and I hope that you can say, well, Pastor Goodby, it's not a sign of weakness. I had somebody tell me that, well, you're different. I know how to get with them. I'm like, no, no, no. I can get with the best as well. It's that I choose to be obedient. When he says it, church is where you practice. Amen. I know the, the, the families at home, look, I don't see that at home. Home is where you practice it as well. But I'm saying church is where you practice it. This is when people, I'm anointed, I can let them, are you praying for people? Hey, can I pray with you? I wait for the pastor, which, which is nothing wrong in and of itself, but a healthy church has a body that knows how to do body ministry. That can speak and say, hey, good godly counselors that know the word that can say, hmm, what are you doing for? And so that's the aim. Walk in love just as Christ loved uh, also love. He is separating. And again, this is important. I just set everything up. Said, if you don't trust the word of God, then this is going to be a book of suggestions. That's nice. Oh, ain't that, look at that. They, you see him? See what he's saying? No. He says he expects us to obey that teaching. I have I owe it to you. That's why, <laughs> even if I'm upset, something doesn't happen right, and the sound and the little thing, I, I'm like, you know, and I have to get over it. 
Not that we just accepted it, because I can't go back and say, hey, look, what's going on? I shared it through the years with my kids, and they all, dad, you're in your flesh, you know? What, what went on, you know? And even in that, you know what God is telling us? He said, if the music went away, could you still praise me? If you didn't have the sound and the lights, I, I had a wonderful opportunity of experiencing that in Nigeria when I was like, oh, this is worshiping out in the out in the, the, the flatlands of the motherland, amen. Like I told Bishop, I said, I made it to the motherland, right? And um, so I'm sitting there, I'm looking, and it was beautiful. It was nighttime, starry night. They had generators cutting the lights on for us, a makeshift uh, uh, stage that was like moving back and forth. Mosquitoes, all the everything, and I was sweating and had a sweat rag and doing this, and they praising the Lord, and I got convicted. I got convicted. The lights, the the cameras, the action, amen. The the air conditioning. I, I the same thing in Mexico. We learned, you learn real quick, amen. Sister Jesse, when she went to uh, Hades, and and Sister Rose, when y'all went, y'all that was pure worship. That's that boy. That ain't, ain't nothing. There ain't nothing Hollywood vacation about that. It is serving yes, under hardship. It, it wakes you up. You come, matter of fact, you come back and you're like, well, we, we, we lost it. We lost it because we're so used to, oh, ooh, yeah, I ain't going because it's, it's too warm there. And they're carrying benches, got benches carrying to the, uh, like, we were like, who? We were like, who are those people? I remember driving in a car and I felt so bad. I was like, man, what are they going to? I thought they were going someplace else. They're like, they're going to see y'all. And I'm like, we're still five miles away from the, 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 the land that we were going to. So, just a revelation of the fact that God, forgive me. Forgive me. Amen? And so, you learn that. Just as Christ, you see the example there? Just as Christ loved you. He is saying that the reason why the standards are hard. I can, can I tell you this? Christianity is not easy. It's not. <laughs> Amen. Right. It is not easy. I, I used to, you know, sometimes we try to, hey, be a Christian because you get this and this. Mm -mm. That's wrong gospel. The gospel that you preach is one of, you get set. Because people think it's a, it's a quality of life. Upgrade people think, oh, good. I'm, I'm, I got a business, I'm gonna pass out my business cards. That's where you got a lot of that going on, and that's why you need a faithful preacher who doesn't preach to the pocket who says, Hey, we're gonna we'll operate our church lean and, and mean, amen. And we don't have to build monuments to ourselves. There's a lot of that going on, a lot of these multi million dollar churches. And I say, and they go, Man, we can't afford our budget, we gotta more power people. I heard numbers, and I was like, Whoa. And you see why it's the temptation to go to ease off the message versus doing it the way God says to do it. If we do it his way, amen, it's going to be blessed. You're going to see the, God is not about the numbers per se, amen, because this is why the road to heaven is narrow and the road to hell is wide. I used to read that and be like, okay, Lord, are you sure? What he's saying, not that many people going. And what he's saying is, God will give you the desire, ultimately, of your heart. So it's not about him being mean and mad and angry. He died on the cross. He provided a way of escape. He presents it to you. But what about my cousin that uh, said he knew the Lord? Hey, I, I don't know. I don't know where he is. This is how I minister to people. They, they want to try to hit who, you know, mess you up. I can't speak because I really didn't know him. I just say that this is what the, words, the word of God says. And I needed a savior. I was in that same boat too. This is how we minister. This is how we give it right back and say, oh, no, no. I, I, was, I was an enemy of God. That's why I love Paul. Paul always had a way of saying that everything that I did. He was a top Pharisee, amen. At the top school, amen. He was the one signing the death warrants of Christians, amen. He was in the in crowd. And he says all of it was done. It was nothing. He was demonstrating the fact that when you have Christ, you have everything. Apart from Christ, you have nothing. Amen. Amen. Verse 2 continues. It says, you, <clears throat> that it says, and walk in love just as Christ um, also loved you and gave himself up for you. And offer, offering and, and a sacrifice to God as a sweet smelling Savior. Amen. That is so 
everything that he did. And, and, and we have to get this mindset. We have to understand what was he doing? What was he doing on earth? God gets the glory. We sung that tonight. Oh, God, the glory is yours. The kingdom is come. We were singing that not as a nice little ditty song to sing. We were singing it because we were like, wow. This is why he gets the glory. This is why every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. After what he did, the Bible says that God says, now you're going to sit in the seat of, of authority. Now you are going to judge the world. The same one who created the world with the Holy Spirit, the same one, because we know that from the book of John, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and nothing was made without the word, right? And that, that's Jesus talking about Jesus talking about we understand the works of the Holy Spirit in creation. We know the work of the God, the Father, and we know the work of God, the Son. Amen. We see a Trinitarian tag team. Amen. On the creation of life. This is why I tell people it's easy about the scripture. Well, you know, those men way back when. And I'm like, you think God didn't anticipate that? Well, you know, they just got together. You didn't think he anticipated that? The same God that you said that you worship about creation, you know, somehow, oh, the devil caught him off guard. No, it's been a battle. We know the enemy's going to come in with lies, subtle lies, not direct lies, subtle lies. You need to know the word. Can't skip class. You need to know the word to know how to distinguish. It is becoming more and more increasingly. When the word of God says that in the latter days, this is what you're going to see, I'm seeing it. I'm like, man, it's hard to know who's who for real, who's not. But until I get into the word, then I see clearly. I can understand the formation of one world government. I can understand who's behind one world government. Why? Because we understand that the Antichrist needs a one world government to run and rule everything, right? So we understand we have all that in harmony. We're not bits and pieces in our theology. We understand in a complete picture. Amen. And thank God because when we come to the church, we hear the word. And then when we also do, I will say this, Bible study, listen to the word. We are finding more and more ways to get the word out. Amen. I will say fine. And, and I trust the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not going to be here saying, you know, watch out for this one, one. Watch out for that one. I've been under some teachings where the person was a little bit off on this side. And it was way out of, they was a little bit out of balance. But they, they know where to bring it back. And I can hear that and go amen to that. I told somebody I went to a Catholic church for a funeral, and he was, you know, I was sitting there like on guard, like, I don't say nothing weird. I was on guard, but guess what? Boy, he opened that book up, and when he was in, <clears throat> he was preaching, people were crying, and I'm listening, I'm sitting there going, amen, amen. People look back at me. I was going, amen. Why? Because the word of God will accomplish what God has sent it out to do. That is the authority of scripture, amen? I, I, I've heard people say a, a drunk person can tell me a word. <laughs> Listen, the Lord. Now, now, guess what? We're not saying that's the exception and not the rule. <laughs> amen. I would say, you know, the Lord spoke through a donkey. That doesn't mean that every animal is going to be speaking. So we understand how to rightly divide the word. We understand that, okay, God, in this instant, this is what you did. Amen. And so we, we stay strong. It goes into verse 3, talking about immorality. I'm not going to hit each one because you guys know where am I at on time? By the grace of God. All right, thank you. I, I'm, I'm mindful when I do that, guys, only in as much as, because I, I'm, I'm a firm believer, the word of God is going to touch your heart. You're going to grab a couple of things. It's a proven fact that they said over, I, I think the number is somewhere around, 30%, 40% of what the preacher is preaching. Amen. Because it's, we have limitations and yeah, we got this and we got that. And, and But guess what? The Holy Spirit, we can trust the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you only need, I keep saying this, you only need one word. One word. God can say, I want you to go and repent to all the people that you've wronged. That might be one word. And he does that. I love the Holy Spirit. I love how the Holy Spirit brings us into all truth, as Scripture has told us. Amen. And and the same thing. I mean, I look. I got the gift of gab. I can I can go. I can do a two hour uh, uh, dissertation. Uh, but I'm, the love walk tells me be mindful about them. Am I right? My wife uh, and my wife can say, hey, maybe she's not. <laughs> not not and, and again, not stifling anything from the Spirit because I believe that the same Holy Spirit that's in me is in you. Take the word and build on it. You know, people think that I just got to be at least four or five hours. Why? 
right? We don't learn that way. And, and, I, and again, God can take a little bit of time. So verses 3 through 4 talks about what we should not. I can preach on that in and of itself, by itself, because, again, what we just established is that the word of God is the standard for the church, for the believer, for the house of God. Amen. How we are to in, uh, interact with each other, not speaking in certain ways, not talking unseemly. I've heard people go, well, you know, the Lord working on me. I'm like, yes, but there's an expectation. There's an expectation of holiness. Amen. God delivered me piece by piece. Okay, and then when my, my mouth, when he fixed the mouth, then he says, now I'm working on the brain. He's still working on the brain. The thoughts, the thoughts that you think, the negative thoughts, the murmuring and complaining, he's working, he's still working on my mouth. Oh, well, I got this and I got this this week. I told everybody, I said, I started my work week out already thinking about Saturday and Sunday. Amen. And, and, and to be honest, it, it, it's, it's a, I, I understood that my flesh is weak, but the spirit is strong. Because I believe that God has a plan. I believe that God is going to work divinely. He said, all I got to do, all I need for y'all to do, y'all just move out of the way and let me have my way. Amen. That's all we got to do. We, we just got to tee it up. Right? There, and move out of the way. Let the Holy Spirit move on the lives. Minister to the people that are going to be here. I believe salvation. I believe people are going to be rekindled. Um, Brother Aziz said something a, a while back. And he was talking about, in this life, he said, you know, gospel, um, hip-hop, delivered him. And I, and I kind of concur with that. Not that it just in and of itself, but it, it um, for me, coming out of where I was coming out of and doing a, a spiritual detox, anybody know what I'm talking about? Spiritual detox, you coming out of the world, right? And God's like, I need something to, to, to feed me where I'm at, right? Because we, you know, we get religious and we go, no, the Lord says you only come to, no, God ministers Culturally, you see his plan of salvation, it's diversity. Look at every tribe, every tongue, every nation. And we tend to limit God. So I remember I was like, it was I was going out buying, you know, like cross movement. He was talking about gospel games, and he was and I said, I'd be listening to them. We had certain groups that we were I was listening to and bobbing my head to it and hearing about deliverance. And hearing about coming out of from, from amongst them and be separated. I was we were raised in a thing where, you know, if it wasn't and, and I take nothing away from Mahalia and Jackson, but if it wasn't that, hey amen, that's all you had, right? And so we, we listened, and so I looked and I said, even in God's God's plan of salvation, Paul, we looked at Paul, the, the Gentiles, the, the Hebrews were like, why are we bringing them into the into the faith? It's only for the Jews. And Paul said, Nope. The Gentile, the dogs. As they were called, amen. They're talking about the Romans, amen. That Greek culture that was very, this is out of that context is what he's talking about right here. He's talking about the fact that let no one deceive you with empty words. Why is he saying that? Because in their culture, they had philosophy. They had philosophy down pat. Matter of fact, they had a place where you met and you philosophically talked about life. And he says that they were trying to mingle all of that scripture and a little bit of the word world, and they were trying to bring it together. And he's reminding, and I tell each and every one of us, especially if we have been through the chronological years of life and we know some stuff. I, let me tell you. No, you have been brought with a price. God says, abandon the old ways. Your history, your background, your upbringing, where auntie and them raised you, the way uncle and them raised you, the way your father raised you, all those different things. We can love them, honor our family, love them, but there were some things that we shouldn't have saw, things we shouldn't have participated in, and that 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 right there uh, formed us. And so now that we're saying, in that context, he is saying, let no one deceive you with empty words. It sounds good. Hey, let me tell you, my brother, let me tell you, the black Israelites, and so what we do with our people, we come, i been there. Hey, my brother, 5% is like, am I correct, where we was raised? In New Jersey. It was all up in the neighborhood, and it sounded good. And, and, and for the most part, they were like, hey, stay with your family, um, stay, you know, it was some good messages, amen, but it is the word of God that delivered us. Because I was still angry in my heart. I was still mad at people that didn't personally do anything to me. And God says, you need to get delivered. Amen. I'm going to read one more and then we, we will close. Amen. 
So he says, make sure no one deceives you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. He, God is making a, a difference. He's right there. He's making a dividing line. You have to save. This is why I tell people. It's only two races. The saved and the unsaved. Amen. We understand. Matter of fact, there's a guy that I, I follow that's part of Answers in Genesis, and he talks about that too. And he says racism came in because of philosophies of this world. The distinction. He says we all came through a, a, a lineage from Adam and Eve, and then guess what? We had the flood. So what happened? Cain, uh, uh, not Cain, but we had uh, Noah's children. And from that, and he literally breaks it down. Right now, he's saying that science is lining up to what scripture has been saying. They're doing DNA tests. They're doing 23 and me, and you're starting to see that, hey, I'm a little bit of this, I'm a little bit of that. How did that happen? People go, well, hey, you can't interbreed through that many successions. And he says everybody comes from a degree of brown. It starts brown, right? We can say that in the Middle East. So he says one degree over, you're going to be browner. That's two generations. One degree over here, you're going to be more fair-skinned, but it starts with the degree of brown. When we follow the word and not the worldly system, um, Darwinism, thank you, Darwinism, amen, because they are the ones that said, hey, uh, 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 African-Americans look like came from descendants of apes. Darwinism, that, you know, in public school that we cheer and we go, well, I'm going to let my kid learn that. Totally racist. And, and the philosophy, because it's the philosophy of the, of the world versus God's philosophy. Don't let anyone deceive you. Therefore, do not become partakers with them. He's saying that in their system and their with it, partakers, it's in believing in their philosophies, which I've seen in, in the church. It's a little mingling. We're going we gonna to not follow the word. Let's follow the philosophies of uh, Fortune 500 companies. There's pastors that are doing that. They're abandoning the word. They're becoming more pragmatic, which is another worldview, which is another enemy of the gospel. Whatever works, do it. No matter. Whatever works. Whatever way we got to reach them, just do it. Versus doing it in the right attitude of God. Don't be partakers with them. For you were once in darkness. I love this. This is the thing that it's It's positive. It has a positive tone, even though he's talking about it from a negative position. You were once there. That is good news for each and every one of us. That's good news for our children, our grandchildren, our loved ones. I got people on my mind right now that I go to work with all the time. I'm like, Lord, bring them to the safe knowledge of grace. I know I don't got to seal the deal. I'm not be clever. They just got to see my walk. They got to see the way I talk. They got to see my behavior. They know where they can find me on Thursday. I remember one time they said, like, hey, Goosby, are you here? And then Sarge texts, we have a text thread. My Sarge texts and says, no, Goosby's at church. Now, he didn't say that just, that, oh, he the church. You know, he just trying to be all religious. No, he, he, you know where to find me. They need to see who we are, amen? And he says, you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. The illumination of scripture, the illumination by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit opens up our minds to where now we have understanding of the word and we now ingest it, amen, and we make it a part of us. And it's not just some exterior thing that we allow our ears to hear, but say, I'm not going to obey it. We don't say it out loud. We just do it. So, he says, you are like in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Go ahead, bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, you have told us that we are your children. I, I, we can rejoice in that, Lord. Many of us came from a very difficult week, Lord. We had battles in our minds, battles, Lord, surrounding us, battles coming from outside of us, inside of us, Lord, And but you are the one that has brought us here, and Lord, you have never failed. You are the God that loves us. You demonstrated it on the cross, it was, it was personified by your actions. You showed what love is, not talking about love, not saying I love you, brother, or I love you, sister. You demonstrated sacrifice. That's what love is, sacrifice. Lord, you, your discomfort, your pain, your suffering on the cross was for each and every one of us. And may we never forget it. May we not get to a point, Lord, where we're just like, mm, that was nice. But we bow down and say, Lord, if you did it, I can do it. 
by your spirit, by your Holy Spirit that you left us with, or you even left us with the helper, the Holy Spirit, to move us, to guide us, to bring us into all truth, Lord. We don't have to worry about the errors of this world, Lord. We know by your spirit and your word what is true, and we stand on it, God. May we be an example, Lord, for our children. May we be an example for other believers within your household of faith. And God, may we worship you and honor you. Lord, may we do it not just in repetition, not in religious ceremony, but we do it, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We do it, Lord, from an attitude that says, I love you, Lord, tonight. Lord, if we don't know you, if we don't have a heart that's after you, I pray. I pray right now, each and every one of us, Lord. We, we say, Lord, give me more of you. Teach me how to love you more, Lord. A lot of times we say, I, I know how to love, Lord, to love you, Lord. No, no, we don't. We desire a deeper uh, affection for you, Lord, to the point that we feel your heart, Lord. We understand our importance in the body of Christ. We understand the mission at hand. We have an urgency, God, that we know that there is a dying world out there that needs you and, may, and we need to be prepared. We need to have your word inside of us. We need to have your spirit guiding us. And Lord, we just need to, to flow and be an example of Christ here in this, this world. And I just thank you. I thank you for everything that you have given us. I pray for Bishop and Sister Peggy. I pray for comfort. I pray for, I pray for your peace, God, that only can come by you, not by man, Lord. We, and none of us are adequate. It's by your spirit. Yeah. It's by your power. It's by your will, Lord. May you get the glory, Lord, for healing. May you get the glory for his family, his children coming together, God, and being united and knowing you, Lord. You get the glory for all of that, God, not man. Man cannot brag on this. And we thank you. We thank you for the peace on his mind, peace on her mind. We pray that you would give the doctors wisdom. Guide them, Lord. You are the designer of her body. You're the designer of all life, God. And you know how, how to fix your people. You know how to fix the organs. You know what to do, Lord. And I pray that you would give them wisdom and give them guidance. I just thank you for that, Lord. I pray that he stays encouraged. I pray that his faith will not fail him. Lord, I know the enemy is attacking from all sides, and we as the body will stand, Lord, and intercede for him, Lord. That's what prayer is about, constant communication, Lord, with you. Lord, when, when you bring him to our mind, may we pray. When you bring Sister Peggy to our mind, may we pray. May, we, may it flow, Lord, just in a constant flow throughout the week by your saints of whosoever will. And I just thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen, saints. So good to see everyone. If you need prayer, amen. I believe that the Spirit of God is on you, amen. But if you need prayer, the altar is open, amen. And please join us. For Saturday, um, we're going to be here a little bit early, around 2, uh, to start getting things. I might be here a little bit early. I'm going to be helping Deacon Adams. We've got bathrooms to clean. We, everything that we do is for the glory of God. Everything we do is not for just for show and demonstration. Amen. It's because we want God to look good. Hallelujah. Give God the glory and go serve your king.